Hello everyone, Miss Red here. This time, we are going to talk about the different principles of artistic composition. After this video discussion, you will be able to identify the six principles of artistic composition. Are you ready? Let's get started. The principles of artistic composition. The six principles of artistic composition class is a guide in understanding of a piece of artwork, particularly in the visual arts. These are, first one is the subject of art, second is a function of art, third is the medium of art, fourth is the organization, fifth is the style, and sixth is the judgment. Let's start with the subject of art. It asks the questions, what is it about? What did the artist make? And what does it show? The subject of the art class refers to any person, object, scene, or event described or represented in a work of art. Some arts have subjects, others do not have. The arts that have subject are called representational or objective arts. Painting, sculpture, the graphic arts, Literature and the theater arts are generally classified as representational. Those that do not have subject are known as non-representational or non-objective arts. Music, architecture, and majority of the functional arts are non-representational. Bridges, houses, roads, buildings, transportation, and any infrastructures are examples of functional art. This time class, let's talk about the different kinds of subject. The subjects depicted in the works of art can be grouped into the following. First, landscapes, seascapes, and cityscapes. Artists have always been fascinated with their physical environment. Filipino painters have captured on canvas the Philippine countryside. The national artist Fernando Amorsolo romanticized Philippine landscapes turning rural areas into idyllic places. Second subject is the still life. These are a group of inanimate objects arranged in an indoor setting. Flowers and fruits arrangements are among the favorites. Dishes of food, kitchen arrangements, or musical instruments are also portrayed. They usually arrange the objects to show particular human interests and activities third animals one of the most popular subjects are the animals they have been represented by artists from almost every age and place fourth class is the portrait a realistic likeness of a person in a painting drawing or print the emphasis is the human face the artist highlighting the main feature and de-emphasizing others. Mona Lisa of Leonardo da Vinci is a famous example of portrait. Fifth class is the figures. The sculptor's chief subject has traditionally the human body, either clothed or naked. Sandro Botticelli's Birth of Venus is an example. Sixth is the everyday life. Artists have shown a deep concern about life around them. Most of their subjects are their observation of people going about their usual ways, performing their usual tasks, and their day-to-day -day life. Fernando Amorsolo's planting rice is a good example of a typical life in the countryside. Seventh is history and legend. History consists of verifiable facts, while legends are of unverifiable ones, although Many of them are often accepted as true because tradition has held them so. Furthermore, legends are used as secondary sources in study of history. History and legend are popular subjects of art. Juan Luna's Blood Compact, displayed in Malacanang Palace, commemorates the agreement between Sikatuna and Legaspi's contract of friendship. That is an example of history. The story of Orduha, on the other hand, is a popular legend. 
Eighth class is religion and mythology. Art has always been a handmaiden of religion. Most of the world's religions have used art to aid in worship, to instruct, to inspire feelings of devotion, and to impress and convert non-believers. Ninth is the dreams and fantasies. Dreams are usually vague and illogical. Artists, especially surrealists, try to depict dreams. The grotesque terrors and apprehensions that lurk in the depths of the subconscious. A dream may be of a lifelike situation or it can be realistically depicted. But if the picture suggests the strange, the irrational, and the absurd, then it is a fantasy or a dream. The second principle of art class is the functions of art. It asks the following questions. What is the artwork for? And what did the artist want to show in his work? The term function class is taken to mean practical usefulness. Architecture, weaving furniture making, and car assemblage have obvious purposes and therefore classified as functional. But painting, sculpture, literature, music, and the theater arts seems to provide us a pleasant escape from life's daily problems, amuse us, and provide entertainment. Thus, they are classified as non-functional. The function of art class may be classified as the following. The first one is personal function. Art is an emotional outlet. It leads us to an intensified awareness of the beautiful things in life and thus makes us improve our lives by offering us fresh insights into human nature so that we gain a better understanding of ourselves and of the world around us. Second classification of function of art is social function. Art influences social behavior. It can cause us to laugh at certain phenomena, raise our voices in protest over certain matters, seize a social reality which had never been apparent to us before. It can bring about in us decisions to collectively change, correct, or improve upon human condition. It is also used to commemorate important personages, to record important historical events, to reveal the ideals of the community. It also includes rituals, festivals, and public celebrations. Artworks are vital historical documents, telling us what societies that produced them were like. The third classification of function of art is physical function. The problem of the artist is designing a functional object and make it right for its particular use and at the same time pleasing to the eye of the user. Functional works of art may be classified as either tools or containers. Tools and containers are objects which function to make our lives physically comfortable. A spoon is a tool, so is a car. Building and a house is a container, as well as the chair and the vase. The third principle of art class is medium of arts. It asks the question, what is the artwork made of? Medium in art refers to the material or means which the artist uses to objectify his feeling or thought pigment in painting. Stone, wood, and metal in sculpture various building materials in architecture, sound in music, words in literature, and body movements in dance. According to medium class, the arts are classified into the following. The first one, the visual or space arts, those whose mediums can be seen and which occupy space. These in turn are grouped into two categories. The first one, two-dimensional arts, Example, photography. Second, three-dimensional arts. These are sculpture, architecture, landscape, community planning, industrial design, and the craft like pottery making and furniture making. Second classification of arts according to medium is the auditory or time art. Those whose mediums can be heard and which are expressed in time. These are music and literature. Third is the combined arts. Those whose mediums can be both seen and heard. 
and which exist in both space and time. These include the dance, drama, opera, and movies. The fourth principle is the organization of art. It answers the question, how is the material put together or organized? Organization class is the way the parts or elements are combined and arranged to make a whole. Here are the principles of organization. First, the rhythm. Obtained through repetition of patterns and shapes through the progression of sizes, suggest something graceful, and related to movement through an easily connected or continuous line movement. Second principle of organization class is the balance. These are equilibrium of forces attraction. It is reflected by the interplay of light and dark values, the colors, the spaces, and forms. Balance class can be formal or informal, passive or active, symmetrical or asymmetrical. This is also known as the law of rest. Let's talk about formal or symmetrical balance. That is one side of the composition is equal to or the exact duplicate of the other side. A sense of dignity, poise, order, stability, security, or performance is reflected. While on the other hand class, informal or asymmetrical balance is that the elements on both sides are not identical, but are placed in positions so equated as to produce a felt equilibrium. This type generates spontaneity, movement, dynamism, and excitement. The third principle of organization class is proportion. This deals with the proper or significant relations between two things or parts. It is known as the law of relationships, the harmony, or it is also called as the law of order that implies unity. It describes the arrangement or ordered relationships of the elements to the whole. Next principle of organization is emphasis, achieved when attention is focused on an important part of the work of art. There are several ways of catching attention. First one is the size. A large object dominates over the smaller object. Second is the color. Striking colors are easily noticed. Third is the contrast and diversity. Attention class can be focused on something unusual or different. Fourth is the position or arrangement. The way or manner in which the objects are arranged or placed can be used for greater emphasis. And the last principle of organization is the variety. The contrast or slight difference to prevent utter uniformity and monotony. Now let's move on to the fifth principle of art. This is the style. This answers the question, what is the personality or individuality of the artwork? It is the bias resulting from the artist's personal outlook, training, exposure, and temperament. It is a reflection of the artist's personality. It may be the result of the various forces of artwork at a particular age. And now, let's proceed to the sixth principle of art. This answers the question, how good is the artwork? There are four overall criteria class used in judging whether a work of art is great or not. Here are the following. The first one is the sincerity. It refers to the honesty of the artist's work, a work that is a serious expression of the artist's thought and ideas. Second is the universality. It refers to the universal truths which are permanent embodied by the work. Third is magnitude. It is concerned with the impact or effectiveness of a work of art as a whole. Whether it is shallow or deep, important or unimportant, great or trivial. And fourth is the craftsmanship. It is concerned with the artist's workmanship and taste. Again, the six principles of artistic composition are the following. Subject of art. Function of art medium of art, organization, style, and judgment. Are you learning? 
I hope you are. If you have questions or clarifications, please address it in our face-to-face -face session. Thank you and have a great day. Bye!